of our next expert series here at Women's Wellness That Works. Happy New Year to all of you. I'm so excited to have our first guest on season two of our expert series. And you may have uh, recognized her from our um, story, her story, sharing her story on Women's Wellness That Works. Miss Rachel Birch, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. And Rachel Birch is actually our manifest manifestation expert, which for the new year is something we definitely want to learn more about, learn how to create and manifest the things that we want and desire in our lives. So thank you for being here and sharing your knowledge of manifestation. Yeah, my pleasure. Great. So let's get started. So since the last time I interviewed you, which is probably, it's been a little bit over a year, a lot's happened. So what's happened since that interview? What's happened since that interview? Oh my gosh, so many things. Um, we talked a lot about my kind of stand-up comedy um, background and my coaching business. Um, and since then, I, so my core, like number one value is growth, personal development. Mm -hmm. so that's what just drives me and excites me. Um, and so since then, it's kind of like, every so often I'll go through a what's next. And it's funny because my six-year-old will say my, he'll, he'll put the remote control for the TV and he'll say Rachel Birch podcast, um, <laughs> YouTube. And what always comes up is the interview that I did with you, um, for my story. And so sometimes I'll watch it with him. And it was funny. Cause I heard myself say my story is kind of like a trilogy. Cause I had started as an attorney and then I became a coach and then I became a comedian. And now I guess there's a fourth part, um, epilogue. Um, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, and it's more of like a podcaster, a creator, um, kind of stepping into the, the creative realm as an attorney. I never thought of myself as a creative person. And I went through the um, 12 week program in the artist's way book, yeah. a book I highly recommend. And I started to think of myself a little bit as being creative. And so what's happened in the last year is really stepping into and like owning that like creative side of me, yeah. um, which in the previous interview, we talked a lot about masculine and feminine energy and mm -hmm. exactly. creation is very feminine. So I've definitely kind of shifted into that. Yeah, the contrast of, you know, uh, being a lawyer, an attorney, and then comedian, and now your creative feminine side, right? So tell yeah. us more about how, how did you create this new podcast? So, um, okay. So this new podcast was inspired from my, what was happening at the, the time of my life was last year, I started dating again after, um, you know, I've been divorced now five years. So at the time it was four years, I had kind of dabbled in it, but not very successfully. And, and did you do any like online dating or was it like, yes. you know, in person or how did, how, how does someone go about dating again? <laughs> so, um, I never dated before. Like I met my ex-husband the first day of law school oh, wow. um, in my, it, when I was like 22 years old. So I never dated. People will ask like, how is dating different now than it was then? And I'm like, I don't know. Cause I no. never did it. So when I started, yeah, it's like a whole new, a whole new world. Exactly. Um, I downloaded the apps. That's kind of where I started. Um, as I share in my podcast, I had a story and I actually had, um, a lot of work to do around just being invisible to men. I just, um, did the things that would keep me from being seen in person. I never, ever like in my life besides college experienced, um, being, you know, hit on or approached or talked to in person. So everything, when I started was through the apps and I went on like, 21st dates back in like, you know, 20, 2019, 2020. That seems um, like a lot, 20. Yeah. <laughs> 20 days. yeah. I, but I couldn't, well, except for one, I had a, a short relationship, but except for one, I could not get a second date. And I think I just really had my walls up. I just put up the impression that I, I wasn't interested. And so right. um, I took 
a long time off, probably like, I think all of 2021, I don't think I went on one date. Um, and I just wasn't, it just didn't appeal to me. And so 2022 came around and I decided, you know what, I'm ready to start this process over again. Now, now um, did, were you, obviously, were you, um, I don't know, were you anxious? Were you nervous? Were you, what, what were the feelings that were coming up at the time? Like, oh my, now I have to go out and actually meet people or meet um, men. Highly skeptical. I really didn't think, I actually said to my coach at the time, I said, um, I don't think I'll feel, I'll find love, but like sex would be nice. That was kind of like, it would be nice to like, you know, have somebody, but I don't, I don't think I'll find love. That was kind of um, where I was starting February, 2022. And, um, and then I had decided I think it was, yeah, it was in January. I had just gotten braces, like, like glued, not, not Invisalign, but like actual braces on my teeth. When was um, this? This was in January of 2022. Oh, okay. So January, 2022. Yeah. Got it. And so it was kind of like, is this really the best time to start dating? Like you already think that you're invisible. Now you've added, I did the acrylic, like the clear ones, but still mm -hmm. they were full on braces. You're added braces to this whole thing. You know, I'm not really sure how this is gonna, how this is gonna work. So highly skeptical, definitely nervous, um, almost reluctant. I feel mm -hmm. like I was like, I don't want to have to do this. You know, why can't, why can't like my person just met? Why can't I, I am a manifestation. Yeah, exactly. Why can't this person like, just show up? <laughs> you know, yeah, beam them down. Right. So frustrated. I think I was frustrated too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so you started dating and any, any, anything that you learned about yourself or dating in general after oh, 40? Oh, definitely. But what happened was I, in the manifestation process of doing this, I, um, actually met someone in person. I met someone mm -hmm. on a plane. Um, and that, that was me kind of making a gesture to the universe. I had, I have a fear of flying. And so since I hadn't flown for so long with the pandemic, I took a flight and it led to me sitting next to this man that I met. And so I, at that point I hadn't gotten on the, no, I, yeah, I don't think I'd gotten on the apps yet. I just kind of made the decision that I was going in that direction. And then I met this man. And I learned so much about myself and dating and men. I had put like men and the whole concept of um, romantic love on this pedestal. So there was just this energy about me that was a little too like eager, a little too um, anxious. And so um, you asked before, like how the podcast come about. So the name of the podcast is Love Before 100. And mm -hmm. the concept is that I have this kind of bucket list scavenger hunt. I call it a um, like Sex in the City meets Jackass, that show where like- <laughs> Yeah, right. Himself. <laughs> yes. So I have this list of things that I have to do to like find my person. And so the, the concept is to find love before I hit a hundred points on this list or a hundred years old, because, you know, dating in your forties, you're, you're closer to a hundred than when you're in your- Exactly. 20s. Um, and the list came about, and this is a manifestation tip because I was a little, I don't want to say obsessed because that makes me sound bad, but like preoccupied mm -hmm. with the goal. And the goal was a relationship with this man. And so one of my friends that's a coach was out visiting from Chicago and we were like, let's make this like fun. Like, let's say before you find the relationship of your dreams, what would you want to do? What's something that you couldn't do if you were in the relationship? And so like, I'll share with clients that are trying to start a business or have a baby. It's like, let's focus on how you can be in the now and right. not be so worried about your goal. Exactly. And so I started writing this list of like, well, I, it'd be fun to go out on a date with like an Australian. And it would be fun to go out on a date with a guy from Texas. And like, you know, like a guy with a, just a mustache. And so I kind of wrote out this like list of, it started as men, it evolved into, into different items, but, and a fireman, you know, like go on a date with a fireman. So to get my mind off of him, I started to write out this list 
And um, it was now, interesting. Was this, was this list a list of criteria or no. things about a man, or was it just a list? A list. It was just a list of like fun. Like it was just like a, like a game. Like it was a, now, yes, when you're trying to manifest your perfect person, you write out a list of all the characteristics you're looking for. That was not this. This was, if I'm going to be on a dating app, I'm just going to like go out with a teacher, with a surfer, like a B-list celebrity. It was just kind of like, let's make this fun so that I can focus so that my energy level can be focused mm -hmm. on something that's light and fun and exciting instead of like, why haven't I heard from this guy Got or it. does he like me? Yeah. So focusing it back on yourself versus the other person. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So let's talk about manifestation. How yeah. does this work? How I know in the new year, we are all, you know, I, I'm not a, a new year's resolution person. I, I like to set intentions. I, yeah. I believe setting an intention is much more um, doable in uh, achieving that intention versus, okay, I need a you know, be here by this time or, you know, by second quarter, by third quarter, here are my goals. So what, what works in manifestation? How does that work? Okay. So manifestation is the process of creating something first in your mind and then having it, you know, become real in your reality. And I like, it's an old song and probably not one that everybody knows, but I like to refer to that old Billy Ocean song, get out of my dreams and into my car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's great. like, you know, like the music video is like him thinking about this woman. And then all of a sudden she's next to him in his car. Yeah. And so that's what I like to just as like a little shortcut, like that's manifestation and you have to have it in your head first, what it is you're trying to create. You have to be clear. I say, um, a lot of people are clear on what they don't want. Mm -hmm. People will say like, I don't want to work. I don't want debt. I don't want yes. this. I don't want that, but they're not really that clear on what they do want. And, and Billy Ocean was very clear on the exact woman that he wanted sitting next to him. And so, so how, how exact do you need, need to be in manifestation? I mean, you know, um, we talk, I also talk about the law of attraction and cause and effect. Is that similar to manifestation? Yes. yes. Law of attraction is part of manifestation. But then the, you said how specific do you have to get? So one of the big principles for me, you know, and I'm not like the, author there's a lot of different um, viewpoints, but what's worked for me and it's, I, you know, I've manifested so many things that like, I've just trust this process for myself and I've watched it work with clients is not getting again, attached to the outcome. So mm -hmm. you want to be specific, but you don't want to be obsessed. That was the whole thing with like, stop focusing on this guy, because I'm sure you've heard this before. There's a concept of this or something better. So right. you, you are, you are invested in getting what you desire, a conscious relationship with an amazing partner. Um, but it doesn't have to be John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't yeah. have to be this guy. It can be someone better than that guy. And so, um, manifestation works by getting clear on your desire, but not like, um, single point focused, right. Mm -hmm. Um, getting clear on the desire being not attached to the outcome, leaving space for uh, something better to show up for you. Um, I like to think of like when you're going to buy a house and you're like, this is the house. Right. And then it's not the house. Yeah. There's going to be an even better house that's going to come along. It's going to, you know, and it always works out that way. So that's a great, actually, that is a great uh, example of manifestation when you talk about the house, because the house I'm currently in, um, I had moved from a uh, San Clemente to Irvine, which I'm, I was like a diehard San Clemente and I did not want to leave. It was during COVID. Um, unfortunately we had to move and it was just during the worst time, worst time during COVID to find a house and, you know, look for, look for what it is we want. And I put out there, you know, certain things that I wanted. I didn't want to settle and so forth. And, um, it kept on bringing me back to this house in Irvine. And for whatever reason, I, I'm i all about energy. I'm all about vibes. It just didn't feel right. And I kept on saying, no, 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 no. But all the other homes that were in the area that I wanted to were overpriced, ridiculously overpriced, just, just ridiculous. So it kept on bringing me back to this house. 
And then once I surrendered, once I said I was open to it, I'm thinking, oh my God, it has it had everything that I wanted on my list. And I'm thinking, what was I, what was I not seeing? So manifesting what I wanted was actually letting go and surrendering and being flexible yeah. to what was already there. You know, sometimes it's it's in front of your nose and you don't even know it. Yeah. So yeah. So that that's a great example of yeah. Finding the, the right house for you that's really there. And having that flexibility too, that's definitely something that I've learned through this last, you know, year of dating as far as like not being so rigid around how it should look or should be. And a lot of times we're like, well, my intuition is telling me this or my, you know, and it's like, yeah, I mean, you may be off that day or the, you can trust yourself, but mm -hmm. also don't come from a place of rigidity where you're closing out like potential options and you can apply that to men and you can apply that to homes, you know? I, yeah, I agree. And I think um, men and women have certain criteria or char characteristics that they want in a person. If they, they can't find that person, then, it, then it's a no, right? It's right. a constant right. no. So then you, you, you get stuck, you get stuck in this stagnation of like, I'll never find love or I'll never find the right, right person, whatever the right person is. Right. Right. It's kind of like, this is a bad example, but we're going to go with it. Um, I remember one time learning, I went, I went to school as a health coach and they provide all the different philosophies for you. And there was one philosophy that was every single day, you should have this many carbs and this many protein and mm. this many. And then there was another one that said, you don't have to do it daily. You just have to make sure over the course of the week mm -hmm. that you get that all in. And the flexibility of just make sure that you get it in over the week instead of the day is what I want to kind of highlight here and say, you don't have to, you know, look at your intuition in the long game. Look at it like based on a couple touch points instead of like, I met a guy yesterday at Starbucks and he came and sat down next to me and he smiled and I smiled. And then I turned back to my work and I thought, this is an opportunity. So I turned back and I noticed that he was eating a cookie. It was 10 AM. And so I said, are you having a cookie for breakfast? And he smiled and broke the cookie in half and offered me half of it. It was, it was super cute. And, <laughs> and I was like, Ooh, I like this guy. Well then, so we ended up talking for like an hour and a half, but halfway through the conversation, I was like, this guy's an overshare. This is a red flag for me. I think he's a no. But then by the end of the conversation, I had kind of come back around. He was very spiritual. He like had a lot of like, he was actually sharing a lot of great philosophies. And so I thought if I had stopped this conversation anywhere, you know, I had gone back and forth on, and I just met him. I don't, you know, one of the other things I learned is give people space to let you, let them show you who they truly are. Right, right. Um, but it's like, if I said, well, my intuition says that there's a red flag or this is a no for me. I could potentially have been, you know, missing out on something that can turn into something good. So for you in the house, it's like in this moment, like, oh, I don't know, I'm not feeling it, but like ultimately ended up being the right after checking in, it ended up being the right choice. And that's the same thing with manifestation is, you know, allowing, receiving, being open. It's very much the way I do it more in the feminine elements of attracting and, and magnetizing than hustling and going after and pursuing. So how um, how does uh, having a positive attitude or mindset attribute to manifestation? I mean, do you need oh. to have that? I mean, that's okay. like one of the basic yes, foundations. That is huge. Positive. And I want to I want to say first. I mean, I like last week I was so sad. I cried for like three days. So that doesn't mean when you're manifesting, you're just always positive and you're always yeah. happy. But I would say, are you giving energy or taking energy? Mm -hmm. Like when I was in my like crying, I had my boys with me and I, you know, I would say to them, it's okay. Like sometimes we just feel sad and I, my, my older son will, you know, he's a teenager. So I know that he goes through periods of having sadness and I don't want him to make it mean that he's a sad person or that his life isn't good. So I let them see me cry. And I said, you know, this is going to pass. I'm just feeling feelings. I go, I don't even know what it's attached to, but I feel really sad right now. And I felt like in that moment, I was giving them love and lessons and understanding and experience instead of like, Get away, get away from me. 
don't bother me. I feel sad. That's more of like, kind of like a taking energy. So it's, it's not necessarily showing up happy all the time, but it's showing up in like, you know, being love, being love instead of wanting to get Mm -hmm. love. And so, um, on the days that you can be positive, not being in a victim mentality, not being in a martyr energy, not being in a complaining place, not being attracted to drama, just showing up, you know, um, yesterday I was feeling a little bit off and I was like, okay, I got to change that. I was feeling bored, right? Bored is not an energy that you're going to magnetize things in. Right, right. So I put on a song. I just hit shuffle on my playlist and I can't remember, but the perfect, oh, it was girl, put your records on came on. And I was like, exactly. I feel sad. I'm going to put my records on. And so it was kind of like this confirmation of like, not only was it the music, but it was getting that kind of connection to source by getting a message through the song title that pulled me out of that. And I thought, okay, now I'm in a manifesting energy. So yeah. So when I go to any event or even a party and I see the first person that's mine, I'll usually walk up to them and say, okay, it is about energy. It totally is about how you feel about this person or, or anyone when you walk into a room, but yes, that positive uh, mindset, the energy exchange yeah. is huge for manifestation. Now, what are, um, so we talked about being clear, right? Is the first thing. Um, and then having a positive mindset. Um, what was the third thing that you had said? So being um, clear, having positive mindset, um, not being attached, not to being attached this or something better. Definitely. Right? Um, and then there is, it's a little like there is, there's getting clear on what you want and then deciding, making a decision, I will have this, like, this is for me. It's almost giving yourself permission, but again, not being attached. It's this kind of like little dance that you have to do where you're, I deserve this, you know, and there's a lot of affirmations that I'll put in place when I'm going through this process and I feel like a, like a broken link in the chain. It's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm going to say I'm worthy and deserving of having, you know, a new house or I'm worthy and deserving of having a conscious relationship when you can find there's a piece there, but it should really flow from my most recent manifestations came as me seeing something that someone else had and going, oh, I, I want, I think I want that. Like, oh, I want that too. Not I'm sad or jealous or any of that kind of stuff. Just yes, kind of yeah. feeling an awareness in my body and it can show up as jealousy. And then you just got to turn it real quickly. That's the energy. You can go, oh, I want that. That's something that I desire too. And you just make it a blanket statement of, I desire that. And then this, the decision is, and, and I'm going to have that. I will mm-hmm. have, that. you know, and yeah. it's just that kind of simple. And so here's the, here's the other thing. We can definitely be clear about it. We can have a positive mindset, not be attached. But what about having a plan? What about an action? What about not just saying, oh, it's just going to happen, but without some kind of action, you know, yeah. you got to do something to actually create that manifestation. You do. And again, the action is going to be based on where your energy is at. It's not like this frantic, like throw everything at the wall. It's not, you know, like for me, I like to do focus on what's fun or what's going to provide growth. And so, um, like for example, with the podcast, I want to grow the audience And there's a gazillion ways that I could do that, right? I could get on TikTok. I could get on Instagram. I could write articles. Like there's a lot of BGS on podcasts. Like there's a lot of ways that I could do it, but I'm going to do what feels good. I'm going to take action. Of course, this isn't about like sitting back and waiting for it to drop into your lap, but I'm going to take the action that feels the best for me. So like, I don't know that this is going to result in many listeners, but, um, there's this little library at the Starbucks that I go to. That's like, take a book, leave a book. Mm -hmm. And I had a book called why men love bitches. And apparently it's a very popular date. I have seen that book. I have seen that book. (laughs) So I read it and I was done with it. I'm just kind of like, so I wrote inside the cover and I said, here's all you need to know. Number one, don't be a doormat. Like essentially that's, that's, that's the message, not be a, be a bitch. And then I wrote number two, don't read this book, listen to the Love Before 100 podcast instead. And I put it into the library. Uh And so like for me, like with manifestation, 
you just need one person. Like you could have, I, I've actually had, and this is a manifestation. After my second episode, I had a podcast network approach me about acquiring the, my podcast. They wanted to distribute it and produce right. it. And yeah, I mean, and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I manifested this. Right. Ultimately, I turned it down because this or something better. Um, because like, you know, they wanted 50% of the intellectual property rights and stuff like that. It just, it wasn't a fit for me, but it was proof of concept for me that this is something that somebody is going to want and the right terms will come in. It's valuable. It was, it's valuable. Valuable. It was valuable to yeah. someone, right? Yeah. And so that's the thing, putting that book there was fun, but you know, I, I, it was, it's in Crown Del Mar. So it's Newport beach. Like who knows the one person that might pick that book up could create a bigger result than me showing up every single day on TikTok and hating it, right? I love Instagram. I will do Instagram stories all day long. My coach is like, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. And I have a, an account, but I don't, I have a, an assistant that like does it because I don't like it. So your actions should align with how can I make this fun? How can I make it more enjoyable? If you love people, go to networking events. If you love, you know what I mean? Like, I started doing, um, one of the things I manifested was being in a sitcom pilot and oh. <laughs> I, I met somebody through stand-up comedy classes. And then ultimately she wrote a sitcom and like, they, you know, offered me, they said, do you want to try out for this role? And they had like 700 applicants and I'd never acted, but wow. they picked me for the role. Yeah. Because I went to a stand-up comedy class because it sounded fun to me. And yeah. so that's the action that you want to take. You want to align it with what do I like? Do I want to join a hiking group? You know, do I, I found like on Facebook, they have this um, taco Tuesday hiking group where you can go hiking and then they go get taco Tuesday after. And I thought, well, that's fun. That could be something for my podcast or a date. I might make a friend, like a, a yeah. female friend. So take action. Yes. But not from a drudgery place, not from like, I hate this. Take it from how can I make this fun? Um, you know, what, what, what do I want to spend my time doing? Yeah. So it's not from a have to, but I, I get to. Yes, you know? exactly. exactly. So that definitely makes a huge difference. If you, you definitely enjoy what you're creating. Yeah. You know, everything I like. So what kind of, um, what can you share with our audience about, um, you know, some of the things that you've learned? Okay. We're going to go back to a little bit about the dating scene after 40. Yeah. that you've learned um, in general about dating after 40? I mean, are there things that you've learned? I know you've learned about yourself yeah. through dating because you, you can't compare in your 20s because you said you never dated really in your 20s. But now after 40, how is that even an option for women now? Because everything seems to be focused on, you know, image and you know this and that but finding someone as a companion how yeah. does that how what can you share with our audience for women over 40 so i think the biggest thing and i haven't found my companion so i'm not speaking from right. that place but i'm speaking from a place of someone that's on the journey and doesn't mm -hmm. want to quit cuz here's the thing i think most people get frustrated and they quit and you're not going to find your companion if you quit and you're not going to find your companion if you're app, if you're belief system is I can't find him or I'm not going to find him or there's no one out there for me or it's hard, you know, after 40. Um, I think that there's a lot of advice out there. A lot. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of people on Instagram. Literally anyone could be on Instagram. I have, I've had to block people <laughs> that keep showing up in my feed. Yeah. And I'm like, this person is an idiot. Like yeah. this is the worst <laughs> advice I've ever heard. And then they'll have like 300,000 followers. And I'm kind of like, this doesn't even make sense. So what I've started to do is, um, I I've gathered all the different opinions. I have all the information and then based on my own self-awareness, I lead from that place. And I go, um, you know, is this, is this, an action that I want to take, right? Like if I want to text somebody or is this, 
the other, when I put that book in the um, library, I walked away and then this cute guy came in to get his coffee, his mobile order. So I yeah. walked over and I pretended like it wasn't my book. And I, and I go, can I ask you a question? And I pointed at the book, like, I'm just seeing it. And I was like, is it true? Do men love bitches? And he kind of <laughs> smiled and he goes, sometimes. And, um, and then he left. So it wasn't a love connection, but I followed my heart of like, I don't want to leave and be like, I should have said something. I should have said something. I should have said something. So trusting myself to like, just have fun again in the process. And the interesting thing that happened with my podcast last season was towards the end, all the things on my list were where I could find my person, right? Take up a new sport, go to a networking event, but I don't want to take up a new sport. I don't want to go to a networking event. So I changed it to where I want to go, the things that yeah. I want to do, the feelings that I want to feel. And so I put on there thing, like I put on, go to a cougar bar. There's like a famous cougar bar in Newport. And it was like, I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, the quiet woman. And I oh, was like, I, I, I've heard yeah. of that place. Yeah. And I was like, I want to go there. And of course, serendipity, like the universe showing up. That's where I actually met someone who asked for my number, right? Like in person right there. And so following, following your heart and fall and just anytime you're, you're having a good time, you are going to be glowing from the inside out. So yeah. we don't have to worry about like we have wrinkles or we've had babies or we have anything sagging. If you're in the energy of fun and lit up and excited about life, you're going to be magnetic. That's just how it works. And that's been yeah. my personal experience. There's a quote that says that confidence is the best beauty or the best attraction, yes. you know, yeah. Coco Chanel, being I think. yeah, being confident, really being, um, you know, loving yourself, being worthy, right. To receive is really another way of attracting the person. And also depending on where you're at your level, I, as you mentioned, you know, where you're at, you're, you're going to attract the same person based on your level and where your, your energy is at. Because yeah. if you want to attract someone who is maybe of a higher energy or a higher value, then you have to be at that same level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joe Dispenza says, be the person you want to attract. Like, would you date you? And there was exactly. a, definitely a period of time where I would not have dated me. But now I'm like, yeah, I saw this meme on um, Instagram that said, would you date you? And then it said, I'd be standing outside my window with a boom box in the rain, like um, the movie Say Anything. Yeah. It's, I, yes, I would be, um, I would die to date me, you know? Oh, like, that's beautiful. Kind of and that's exactly what you want. And the other thing is, if you don't want to be alone with yourself, then who would want to be with you? Yeah. Right. If you don't even want to be alone with yourself, why would anyone want to date you or be with you? Well, the other thing is the reality is, and I've had to come to terms with this recently, like you may not find a person, you know, and it's that whole this or something better. Like you better love the life that you live before you invite somebody else in. And the good news is if you love it, you're not going to miss having that person as much as you, you know, think you do because, yeah. um, yeah, I, I mean, I've gotten to the point where I, I enjoy my alone time in my ideal relationship. I have time with my boys, you know, when they're with me, I have time with my man. And then I have time with myself. Like there's going to be at least a day, two days, whatever it is where it's like For yourself. Oh, yeah. Come over. Like I, yeah. you know, I like being in my house by myself doing my thing. So can you share with our audience again, the name of your po podcast? Yeah. It's called love before 100 and it's on every place that you can find podcasts. And so where else can we find you and reach you? Obviously you said Instagram, what's your uh, Instagram it's handle? The Rachel Birch. The Rachel Birch. And you're on, also on Facebook? Yes. Rachel. Great. Okay. I am like, I've learned so much from you in, in this interview. So thank you so much for sharing your manifestation tips. And also what's it like to date after 40 and continuing that journey? I wish you, I wish you love and success and in, in everything that you do. And again, I'm always grateful to have you because you have uh, such great insight about yourself. And of course, you know, coming, you're a mom, you're a mom as well with two boys. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you've done it all. And I'm just, I, I, I'm so proud of you. So thank you so much for sharing your information. Any last words? 
Um, the reason that I really created the podcast was because I wanted people to know that they're not alone in this journey. Like I, 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 I show all the sides. I show the side of like being ghosted. I show the side of really falling for someone and having them not, you know, like just disappear. I show all the sides. And my hope is, and actually I have a lot of people that are married that listen. I have men that listen, but my real goal is um, that I want people to know they're not alone. Cause it's, it, you know, I, I speak about it very positively and excitedly, but I've definitely been through and I share on the podcast, the, the downsides. And so my hope is, and this is, and, and I say this about the podcast, whatever your goal is, I want you to follow my journey because I'm showing you how to be a beginner in the manifestation process. And the number one thing is you can't quit. Like you can't give up. Yeah. You have to do whatever it takes to persevere and not get discouraged. Great. Those are great, great tips. And, you know, for the new year, you definitely want to connect with Rachel Birch. Um, are you you're also, co are you also coaching, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So definitely connect with her. I believe anyone who wants to manifest what they want to desire and create in the new year, uh, definitely connect with Rachel Birch. She's animated. She's funny. She, obviously, <laughs> she's just a great person overall. So again, thank you, Rachel, for being here. Please, please, um, if this resonates with you, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and on our podcast, Essential Conversations with Essential Anne. And remember, every woman has her story. What's your story? Until next time, we'll see you on the next expert series here on Women's Wellness That Works. Have a happy new year and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Rachel. Bye.